My name is Brian Talley, and I was a victim of VA medical malpractice in 2016. What happened to me can never happen again, and this is why I have made this a life goal of mine to turn a negative into a positive and come to the table with a solution and change the very law that has ruined my life. VA medical malpractice will always happen. There's no way around it. We are all human, and humans are not perfect. We all make mistakes. However, what happens after the veteran falls victim to gross neglect and malpractice will dictate the outcome of that veteran's future and the effect it will have on their healing process. The tally bill aims to protect all veterans and their families after the medical malpractice has occurred. All veterans deserve a clear path of legal recourse and the right to due process. H.R. 3813, also known as the Tally Bill, will provide the necessary safeguards that are needed to protect all veterans after they have been either injured or killed due to no fault of their own. My story runs deeper than VA medical malpractice. The way the current law stands is that it empowers the Office of General Counsel to cherry-pick clinicians, gain the upper hand by finding the employment statuses of the providers detailed in the veteran's medical record where the gross neglect and malpractice occurred. At this point, the Office of General Counsel is in direct contact with the injured party, with the veteran or the surviving spouse, and essentially feeds them false hope, claims responsibility and accountability, apologizes and reiterates over the course of nearly one year that a settlement is coming and we are going to make you whole. All the while, the Office of General Counsel has already strategized this outcome and has already chose the fall guy based on the independent contractor clause and exemption. I have lived through and by the grace of God survived this egregious ordeal. This is how we treat our veterans. This is why I remain steadfast in my resolve to work for the good of the country, to fix this heinous act and put an end to this shameful loophole. They already have you physically beat up, battered, and hanging on for dear life due to the severe medical malpractice that will put most, if not all, in a state of incapacitation. Then depression, anxiety, and hopelessness sets in. All the while, the veterans... Family completely shifts to survival mode and begins to figure out and fully understand just how things can go south so fast, but also remain hopeful that compensation will soon be coming. You just have to hang in there, they say. Be patient. Meanwhile, the mortgage is late. Credit card debt is stacking up. Kids need clothes, food on the table, car payments. The bills are all still due. And now the injured veteran is no longer working due to the severe injuries sustained. Due to the severe injuries sustained by the incompetence of several clinicians. So now you have been stripped of your livelihood, denied the right to due process, denied compensation because of the loophole we are trying to fix because of the power to cherry pick the fall guy all based on the employment status. So essentially here, Veterans are being denied rightful compensation due to a technicality in the system. You know, these so-called VA independent contractors are only labeled as such when they get in trouble. Why would they work in VA hospitals, in clinics, and wear VA badges, VA doctor's coats, and have VA business cards and come to the same place of business every day and use supplies, the copy machine, printers, and call themselves independent. This is classified as an employee. But again, this is how the Office of General Counsel sees their way out of these cases. They wear you down until you give up and leave you holding the bag in a condition where your survivability has been greatly affected because the injuries that occurred now prevent you from securing gainful employment. I would bet there is a very strong correlation here with the veteran suicide rate as I was nearly a statistic myself because of the physical pain and trauma, depression, anxiety, and the helplessness that you encounter when dealing with the VA attorneys. It's just so sad, and this is not right. And as a proud American, a family man, a father, a husband, a coach, a role model, and proud veteran, 
I will work and do whatever I can to correct this monstrous act. This is why I drafted my own bill and hand-delivered it to Congress. Going door-to-door urging lawmakers to change this outdated law that effectively strips the injured veterans of their right to due process. The way they protect the independent contractors is they hold on to this crucial information all while the clock is ticking. When the state statute of limitations run out or expire, the VA attorneys will drop a letter denying everything they already admitted to and advise you to sue the said clinician in state court. By that time, you have zero recourse as the state statutes have completely expired. This is how they strip your right to due process. This formula also works very well with retaining these independent contractors because, according to the VA books, medical malpractice never occurred within the VA system, thus blaming the independents, which proves the watered-down numbers the VA provides relating to medical malpractice numbers. In turn, they are never reported to the National Practitioner Data Bank because there is now no record of it. And yes, the independent contractor the VA threw under the bus is still employed at the same VA and is considered to be in good standing with the VA as well as the state of California. The final report that a VA whistleblower sent me shows there were numerous VA emergency room clinicians that failed to meet the standard of care, and there was a clear breach in liability. This is very scary, unconstitutional, and a downright frightening tactic. We owe it to our veterans to have a fair and equitable system. I couldn't just sit back any longer and watch from the sidelines as these egregious tactics played out before my eyes any longer without standing up and positively getting involved. Even through my pain, it's been hard and very difficult at times, but I have began to persevere and show signs of resiliency. Over the last 15 months, Since I stepped out and engaged in this mission, I have become a voice for the voiceless. I have always had an entrepreneurial spirit and have always been a guy that looks to find solutions rather than be part of the problem. How can we work together and fix this rather than complaining about these systemic issues that plague the veteran community? It's quite simple. Get involved. In closing, I just want to sincerely thank you all once again for everything you have done. I pray for the best possible outcome, and I also pray that our Congress and Senate will come together and work for the greater good of the country. Congress should really hear my testimony to fully understand exactly what we are trying to accomplish. We must honor and protect, not deny and deflect. Warmest regards, Brian Talley, Sergeant, United States.